berries were really important for us is because that's our livelihood. They're important to us because that's how we survived when we were younger. We grew up picking berries. That was our jam for our pancakes and our bannock and whatever. We grew up on it and we like to see it always be in our community. That's important for us, huh? Berries, eh? We like out coming out here picking berries and uh, that's what we usually mostly come out here for, especially cranberries, blueberries. It goes back to our like ancestors and elders. Like uh, back in the day, that's what they had to live off in the wild and the berries. When I was growing up, uh, we had to pick berries. We had to pick blueberries and cranberries, and then we would can them for the winter, and that's what we would eat all winter. We used to go to church with my mom every Sunday, and then after church, we'd pack the pack a lunch and go picking berries all day. My mom and dad would take us all out and we'd all go pick berries. We grew up grew up like that when our parents taught us how how important berry picking was. The Wood Buffalo Environmental Association or WBEA is an independent, not-for-profit organization that monitors the environment of the regional municipality of Wood Buffalo in the Athabasca oil sands region in northeastern Alberta. WBEA's environmental monitoring of land and air is one of the most integrated and intensive monitoring in any one area, anywhere in Canada. One of the long-held core values of WBEA is the recognition, respect for, and use of traditional knowledge. We value traditional environmental knowledge, we respect it, and we actually use it uh, in our monitoring programs. We in this organization think that's very, very important. Aboriginal peoples, of course, have been living off the land and have lived in harmony with the land for thousands and thousands of years. They have used uh, many of the plants that WBA monitors in its regular monitoring uh, for medicinal, uh, cultural, and other purposes. So we very, very much value the knowledge that they bring to changes that we are seeing and monitoring on the landscape. In 2010, the Fort Mackay First Nation approached WBEA with their concerns about the impact of oil sands operations activity on blueberries and cranberries. Elders shared stories about the community's long history of berry picking and how many were noticing a recent decline in the quantity and quality of berries. As a result, in 2010, WBEA partnered with the Fort Mackay First Nation to establish the Berry Focus Group, composed of interested elders from the community. This joint WBEA and Fort Mackay project brings both Western science and traditional knowledge together in order to monitor the berry patches in and around the community of Fort Mackay and further afield. The berry project is really a collaboration between WBEA, Western science within WBA, as well as the Fort Mackay Berry Focus Group. Uh, over the years, we've had a series of meetings that were then succeeded by numerous visits with the Fort Mackay Berry Focus Group elders very much in the lead, taking us to some of the berry patches, berry patches where they feel comfortable harvesting berries, and berry patches where they feel the berries are in fact contaminated by industrial pollution. I think the first principle or point of community-based research is that the idea comes from the community. Um, and so in this case, the project, uh, Fort Mackay is a founding member of WBEA and they've been asking for a while, it had been their idea to have a berry monitoring project. Over time, uh, the project has evolved to the point where the, the group actually asked us beginning in 2013 to bring some Western science into the project, match it with the traditional knowledge that they hold and actually move to testing the berries. The value of, of having the community monitor the health of berry patches is that they've spent their lifetimes going to the patches and so they have a lifetime of 
already uh, existing observations and knowing how the patches should be. It's really interesting to spend time out in the field with the elders, uh, just the, the things that they see uh, in the plants and, and the ecology are things maybe Western science you wouldn't necessarily notice or you, you pick up on small cues that may or may not be, be testable hypothesis, but just really interesting to see their observations on, on a year to year basis. The first year we just came and visually monitored the, the plots and then the elders themselves requested more scientific information to help them back up their thoughts. The first thing we did was add these passive samplers and they measure the chemicals that are in the air. On the samplers, we have um, nitrogen dioxide samplers, um, sulfur dioxide samplers, and ozone samplers, as well as we have hydrocarbon samplers. Our typical monitoring site is, is kind of set up like this. We've got a small little, uh, we call it a MET station or a MET tripod, a meteorological tripod that measures a few different environmental parameters. Uh, we've got wind speed and wind direction uh, with the young um, propeller anemometer. Uh, we've got a tipping bucket rain gauge relative humidity and, and air temperature, as well as incoming solar radiation. It's all run off grid, so that it's solar powered and it's got a small battery and, and all the sensors feed into a data logger. Aside from the typical measurements we do here, we've installed these uh, leaf wetness sensors. Um, and that was just some, from feedback that we'd had from uh, some elders. A couple of the elders had mentioned that some of the sites you see a little bit more fog. Um, so as a way to uh, measure fog or to measure uh, the amount of wetness uh, a small uh, blueberry plant is getting that, that's maybe not directly rainfall but but mist and fog and stuff in the mornings we've installed the, these leaf wetness sensors so that we can we can sort of test that and compare across sites. The Berry Focus Group have been extremely keen on this project and seem to have really enjoyed it and have wanted to fully participate in it uh, throughout the last three or four years in terms of always being available, uh, always being ready uh, to work on the project, to go out to the field, and to work with us to better understand from both the traditional and Western science angles, uh, what actually is the state of berry health on the landscape. I've been involved with WBEA with this berry picking project for quite a few years. And I like it because it's all about my tradition and I like to know if there's any difference in the berries now than when I grew up. Because when I grew up, you could walk down the road in the bush and just pick berries off and just eat them. I like to know if it's still like that. When you talk to community members, they would mention that before uh, they would just go very close to their homes and they would be able to pick berries, but not, they don't trust those berries anymore. Although maybe they could find them, they would not eat them. And so every year they are having to go further and further to, to pick their berries. In uh, Fort Mackay, we're surrounded by industry and uh, there's a lot of uh, pollution going around that area down there. And like we know for a fact that the berries are not good there for us. I really want to get involved in this uh, just, to, just to kind of look over like where we're at now. We see that the berries are not out anymore. It's all kinds of pollution and we all know that, but uh, it's, it's the weather too. If the weather makes a change too for berries. Well the ultimate goal of the project is to attempt to twin traditional knowledge held by the berry focus group members with western science. We want to make sure that we report back to them uh, in a very very timely way the results from Western science, uh, ask them, what do you think? Do these Western science observations, do they fit with your observations? And what's very, very interesting uh, to us in Western science is that when we reported back, they've indicated to us that our observations matched their observations. The Fort Mackay Berry Focus Group selected five berry sites to monitor, taking care to choose sites that were at different distances from oil sands mining and upgrading operations. The results of the project to date have provided WBEA stakeholders and the community with valuable information. What the group found was that from June to August, 
Average monthly temperature was highest at Pat Shots Island and lowest at Moose Lake. Target Road had the greatest amount of rainfall, while Moose Lake had the least. The air was monitored for air pollutants, including sulfur dioxide, or SO2, and nitrogen dioxide, or NO2. Monthly average concentrations of SO2 ranged from 0.2 to 1.9 parts per billion, with Moose Lake reporting the lowest concentrations. The other sites, which are closer to industrial operations, had higher values. Monthly average concentrations of NO2 ranged from 0.2 to 2.4 parts per billion. Like SO2, NO2 concentrations were lower at Moose Lake compared with the other four sites which are closer to oil sands operations. Western science indicates that these pollutant concentrations were not high enough to cause direct injury to the blueberry and cranberry plants. Air at the site was also monitored for levels of volatile organic compounds, or VOCs. Oil sands contributions of VOCs were highest at Pat Shots Island and JP-104, and lowest at Moose Lake. Blueberries in the area were also monitored for their health-promoting constituents. Phenolics, known to have antioxidant properties, were lowest in Target Road blueberries and greatest in Moose Lake blueberries. Chlorogenic acid is reported to be involved in lowering blood pressure. The content of chlorogenic acid was greatest in Moose Lake blueberries and lower in berries from other sites. The content of proanthocyanidins, which are linked to reducing the risk of coronary heart disease, was higher in Moose Lake blueberries than berries from other sites. In conclusion, this joint multi-year project, which brings together the traditional environmental knowledge held by the Fort Mackay elders in the Berry Focus Group with Western Science, contributed by WBEA, is showing a degree of commonality between perceptions and beliefs offered by the elders and findings offered by Western Science. I think the program with WBEA is important because um, they have this uh, internal uh, trust or feeling about what berries are good, they feel are good for them. But when you uh, combine that to the Western Science and you can do some lab testing and actually uh, see the results from the lab that uh, most of the time reinforces or, or shows that, that they were not wrong when they were saying these berries are good, these berries are bad. So for them it's like a, another vote of confidence that what their traditional knowledge is telling them it's, it's good knowledge, it's still valid. In WBA we're very very pleased that the berry project has evolved so successfully to date. We're very happy, uh, very gratified that the very, very focus group has continued its high level of engagement in this project and that we have taken some steps towards our ultimate goal, which always has been the twinning of traditional knowledge with Western science. Working with WBEA has been useful because at least we get all the results from the testings that they do at the best of their knowledge. So. It's good that we can know if there's harmful toxins on our berries. WBA is uh, it's a you know they're good uh, they're good people to work with and they they got a good reason for coming out here, like they're trying to help our community. It helps the people to learn about the berries. That way, you know, we all need the contaminated ones, and so I'm hoping that WBA keeps that up and it will help us all in the community. I look forward to this every year, every year. This is, I look forward to this every year. It's, I get all excited. I'm just so happy that I'm gonna come out here and 
I'm going to go picking berries. We're all together, we're all here, we're all enjoying ourselves and and uh, there's no like negativity in this group and it's just, it's great to see for me, you know, watching the elders, for myself being a young guy, to uh, learn off them. I like it because we go on field trips and stuff like that instead of getting stuck in the office. This is what I like. <laughs> This is my office right here. <laughs> I just love it. I just really, really like it coming out here because, you know, this is my home. Our hope for the project is that we'll be able to continue this project with the community of Fort Mackay and the Berry Focus Group. Also, we're looking forward to an opportunity to expand this successful twinned TEK Western Science Project model to other communities in the region.